Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting topics. So the first one is gonna be about Quinton Araya again, yes, but this time around we got some interesting talk about him. Some people are saying that maybe it's not Matt Jansen's fault that he failed so badly at the New York Pro, that it could be basically his own fault. I'm gonna show you in a second who exactly said what, but first let's check out this physique update that he posted from 11 weeks out of New York Pro. Do not worry, this is not right now. He is not gonna compete at a Toronto Pro looking like this, no. But at 11 weeks out, you know, I, I thought he would look bigger than he does in these photos right here so looking at these photos i mean let's say he didn't lose any muscle at this point i mean he is posting these photos just to show us that at some point he looked much bigger but honestly like yeah sure bigger but you can see a lot of fluff a lot of this simply had to come off so maybe in fact he didn't progress a lot in that long long off season Sure, in the middle of the offseason, he definitely did look significantly bigger than ever. But as you can see, before he was completely done with the prep, once the glycogen was out of the muscle, once he lost some water and inflammation, you can see that he definitely didn't grow that much, right? Check him out from the back. So his back was always a weak point, and at this point, did it look like significantly improved, so much bigger... I wouldn't say so. I don't see like crazy change in his back from 2022. And as you can see in the lower body, in the glutes and the hamstrings, there was definitely a lot of work to be done before he was dialed in for the stage. Check out the back lat spread as well. So yeah, do you see what I'm saying? So maybe it's not the fault in Matt Jensen and he's speaking for the show, but maybe he actually didn't grow any muscle in the offseason. Is that a possibility? How could that even be? It doesn't make any sense. And if that's the case, is that Matt Jensen's fault because he did his offseason? I mean, Matt is kind of known for the offseason and so many of his guys grew a lot in their offseason working with Matt. So what was the problem here? Well, Mike Van Wick, who is a trainer, who is working in the same gym where Quinton is training, who knows Quinton personally, shared his own opinion he wasn't very clear but you can get idea what he's saying let me play it for you guys and i'm going to talk about it uh mike uh you know quentin personally how do you feel about all this putting a lot of stock in one individual that doesn't have eyes on you they give you a program they give you a this and that to follow but they're not gauging them the effort involved i will say so i, I wouldn't think it's a miscommunication and a miss almost a misappropriation of like Am I giving enough to the plan? Am I doing the plan properly? Am I pushing myself the way I should push myself mm -hmm. in training? All right, you heard it. It's very interesting what Mike had to say. And I've heard this from multiple sources as well. I'm not going to say exactly who, but a person who trained in the same gym as Quinton. And they said that he's like very nonchalant in his training. He's talking to other people. He's not very intense. And I also saw this in the comments, people who are watching his YouTube videos or whatever, they said that he's not very, he's not putting a lot of effort in his training, so maybe there's something to it. I didn't see it, honestly, I just looked for a couple of videos to see what his effort looks like, but I didn't believe it, honestly. I thought, you know, he's a professional bodybuilder, he wants to get to the Mr. Olympia, he wants to win the Mr. Olympia. I'm sure he's doing his training 100%, but... People keep saying this, so is there any truth to it? They say the intensity, the effort of his training is very low, he never goes to failure and stuff like that. And again, when I heard that, I kind of didn't believe it, I didn't buy it, but after seeing the physique update photos from 11 weeks out, it does kind of seem like what he gained in the offseason was just water, inflammation, and it doesn't seem like he actually added a whole bunch of contractile tissue. Now, the problem is, he looked worse this year than two years ago. So did he regress in the offseason? Is that even possible? Maybe he got too fat, and in the process of losing the fat and getting in condition, he lost the little muscle he gained. But look, if he did the same thing he was doing back in 2022 with Dorian Hamilton, if he did the same offseason and same prep, would he look the same? Or would he be at least, like, 10 pounds bigger? 
Even though he, even if he doesn't train very hard, even if he doesn't uh, put all the effort into his training, he doesn't go to failure, even though, even still, he got to this point, guys. This is, I mean, he's still very, very big. So, in my opinion, if he kept doing what he was doing, he would probably make some progress, at least. He definitely wouldn't regress. But working with Matt Jensen, I guess Mike was right when he said it was almost a misappropriation of Matt's approach, of Matt's uh, protocol and training and all that. Diet needs to fit with the training and everything needs to work together. And I guess Matt had a different idea of what the Quint was doing when he was in the gym, maybe. It does make sense, but I don't know. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. All right, next up we got uh, Hassan Mustafa, who is 10 days out of Toronto Pro. And this is his physique update. It's a video, I just paused it right here because in this part, when he transitions, you can see that his conditioning is not very good. <laughs> Definitely not very good. It was always his issue. And we didn't know what to expect this year, he didn't post a lot of physique updates. But after seeing this one, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is not gonna be very conditioned. He was conditioned once in his career. I think it was 2021, maybe, he was working with AJ Sims and the guy got him peeled. Yeah, he was smaller, but he was peeled and he won two pro shows. Ever since then, he did pretty poorly. I mean, he was winning some weak shows when, uh, after losing a couple of shows, and then as the lineup gets smaller and smaller, he wins one. But, you know, for a guy with this size, as you can see, he was pretty much dwarfing Ian Wallier. And everybody says that he's like one of the biggest guys in the IFBB today, especially with those freaking legs. I mean, everything is just super, super massive. Not the prettiest structure, not the smallest waist, but a massive guy. And he lost to Ian here because of conditioning. I mean, he still placed second, and I think he won the next show he entered, but even though he qualified for the Mr. Olympia, at the Mr. Olympia, he couldn't do anything because his conditioning was off. And like I said, his conditioning was only good once, and it was actually in 2022, not in 2021. And again, he worked with AJ Sims, he brought it, but he decided to stop working with him at the end of this uh, season. Why? Who the hell knows? Maybe he was suffering too much and he didn't like it. Maybe he didn't like the dried out look. Maybe what he was doing for this look was too extreme. We don't know. But again, if he wants to be in condition, I guess he needs to do crazy things because it's not really working out for him that easily. So once again, this is his conditioning at uh, 10 days out. This is going to be enough to win Toronto Pro against Akim Williams, against Quinton Araya against John Jewett, there's gonna be a whole bunch of great guys, I probably forgot somebody big, but I do think Hassan, Akim, and uh, John Jewett are gonna be the top three, I don't have Quinton in the top three, and even though Hassan is gonna be the biggest guy, it's not like John Jewett is lacking any size, or Akim Williams for that matter, and Akim brought crazy conditioning to the Arnold Classic, so I have Akim Williams winning that show easily, easily pretty much, but I do think John Jewett is gonna look really good as well. And yes, if you didn't know, John Jewett is gonna compete at the Toronto Pro. Uh, he was supposed to do a show much later in the year. I mean, like five, six weeks after the Toronto Pro. But I was watching him and posting his physique updates during this prep, and I was like, damn, he's really freaking lean if he's competing that late. Why is he so shredded now? And he was like, you guys don't see it, you don't know what conditioning looks like, uh, you can't compare it based on the, you know, physique updates and on stage, but apparently he was wrong. He didn't see it properly, and now at least he can see that he's almost ready for the stage. So at least he caught it, he realized it, and he's gonna do the Toronto Pro, and I think he's gonna look really good, because it looks like he put on some quality size, and he maintained really good conditioning in the offseason, so he's not gonna lose any of it basically like Quinton just did so what he gained is there to stay he's gonna just get harder and more conditioned at this point he doesn't have a lot more work to do look at this he is already far more conditioned than what Hassan Mustafa is gonna be on that stage I'm telling you this looks to me like Nick Walker one week out basically conditioning so yeah and, and the size is there and the size is awesome so I mean he has a couple of weeks look at the glutes here Look at the conditioning, like, how much leaner does he really need to get? Can he get more conditioned? Sure. Is it gonna work in his favor, though, if he loses the fullness? Probably not. Honestly, I would just show up looking like this. Maybe dry out a little bit, lose the water in the lower back, but 
Yeah, I think it's just that. I think it's just water. I don't see any fat on this physique. So yeah, John Jewett is bringing really good conditioning and uh, crazy improvements. I gotta say, he definitely does look a lot bigger. And his off-season wasn't very long. It's crazy how much he progressed in such a short time. So maybe somebody like Quinton Araya should consider doing an off-season like this so he doesn't lose the tissue when he starts dieting. But also he needs to think about putting the effort into the training. And look at John. Damn, he looks freaking crazy right here. So I have John Jewett, you know, top two. If Akim doesn't bring it, and sometimes he can fail. If he doesn't bring it, and I'm sure John will be spot on. He always does the same approach. He never does anything crazy for the peak week. He never really fails at the peak. So I think he has a really good chance of winning Toronto, bro. Even though it's stacked. Even stacked. I can see this guy winning, or at least, at least, the worst case scenario, top three, but I'm predicting top two or win at Toronto Pro. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Also, we got a comeback in three weeks from now. Yeah, it's happening. Sas, Sasan Hirati is going to be doing um, Spain, uh, Ampro Cup Spain. He's going to be facing Behru Stabani and Michal Krizia. So it's going to be a stacked show. Uh, can Sas Hirati win it? I don't know, I mean, if you guys remember him from back in the day, he was really good, he was like, I think top 2 at the New York Pro at one point, he had a very polished, very plastic kind of look, similar to Phil Heath, with also very good shape and symmetry and all that, not the biggest guy, but with his shape, and he knows how to bring conditioning, he's prepping by himself here, and he's competing in 3 weeks, and the last show was, I think, in 2018, so it's been 6 years, he did get older, so we don't know what to expect, I'm not gonna talk too much about this guy because I don't know how many of you guys even remember him. I remember him because he sort of left an impression because he was very good at the time, but he decided to, I don't know, not compete in a while. I don't know why, but yeah, he's coming back. Whatever you guys think about whichever part of this video, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.